G'day guys, in this video we're going to be looking at this, uh, which is the Anticubic Cobra S1. Um, it's not that new, I think it's been out for close to a year now, uh, but I managed to get my hands on one. We've only just started getting them in the stores in Australia. This is much like the Cobra 3, um, but it's contained. So this is going to be a quick one because I need to get this off my table and um, get on to other projects. So let's get into it. Okay, so we'll just have a look at the machine here. Um, it's all basically plastic. The door's plastic, the lid here is plastic, the sides are plastic. There's a lot of plastic. And um, I'm guessing that's where they've saved costs. It would have been nicer if it had glass, but it is what it is. Um, on the inside, it's got three lead screws and three linear rods, which is basically the same as the K1 series. So there's a lot of similarities there. Um, the belt system's the same as the K1. Linear rods for the head or the extruder, so it's fairly common to what most of these other printers are like. Removable bed plate, um, plastic here. There's not too much in the way of being able to level this. You can undo the screws under the plate, maybe stick shims in there if the plates, if the bed's unlevel. But for, in my experience with this one, the bed's pretty level, so I haven't needed to worry about that. Now we'll just grab the head and pull it forward. Um, it seems fairly okay. There's nothing really too special about it. Like I mentioned, there's linear rods, so... Everything seems to work okay with it in that aspect. Um, we'll flick on around to the back and just have a look how the um, ace connects to it. Okay, just looking at the back of the machine here, um, we've got the four tubes out of the ace, which go into a hub, then goes into the single, into the extruder head. Um, if you've got two ace units, then you're obviously going to have eight tubes into four, then into the one. So, um, they sell some sort of adapter or something for that, but I haven't been able to source it, so I don't know much about it yet. Uh, the poop shoots here on this one, very much like the Bamboo and the K-Series. And then your ace just plugs in here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a filament sensor, like a run-out sensor. Um, and then you just plug in your ace, you daisy chain your second ace from this one. Another thing to keep in mind is the with the Coreality series, they have a buffer which sits on the back and sort of goes sideways and the filament feeds backwards and forwards. Um, this one here, all of the pressure sort of systems in here, so these pull out, these actually move out when it's printing. So you can't put this up against the wall as you're going to be pushing into the wall. So you just got to keep in mind not to block the back of this because they all pull out would have been nice if they had just done it all inside of the unit and then just had a single out like the others, like the AMS and the CFS. But I guess doing it this way, there's less chances you're going to get um, the filament binding up on the inside of the hub inside of there and having to pull this apart. So that's one reason, I guess, that this is probably okay. But for what it is, that's basically how the ACE is connected to the back of this machine. And this is the ACE unit. It's the same It's on the Cobra 3. Um, it's all plasticky, same theme as the printer. Still have a concern about this hinge here with the weight of the lid. The ACE unit that came with my um, Cobra 3 didn't actually have this sort of filament stabiliser piece in here. And that adds a considerable amount of weight to the lid. So this hinge here even buckles backwards and forwards even more. So if you have one of these, just be careful not to allow the hinge to go backwards and forwards too much, because it will eventually break. Works as a dry box. There's nothing too special about it. It's just the same as an AMS or a CFS. Okay, and we'll quickly have a look at some of the print quality. So we'll start off with a little beardy. Um, he came out good, just as good as the K3, or the Cobra 3. Um, articulation's all good, straight off the plate, no issues with it, no weird artifacts around the body, uh, like ringing or anything, so he was pretty good, not issue with that. Uh, the little socket man, he came out good, relatively okay around the, the body here, a little bit of, you know, ringing, or, you know, ghosting or whatever you want to call it on, on the edges, but Overall, that was pretty good. Around the lettering, it was all good. 
Uh, it does have an issue. There was a bit of stringing with this printer. You may or not be able to see it, but uh, just filament stringing. This obviously can be sorted out in settings, but um, it's not too much of an issue, but it's there. Uh, the Cobra 3 didn't actually have any of these stringing issues, so that needs to be addressed. But overall, it came out good. Uh, the multicolor tests that I do usually, uh, there is a bit of discoloration in the top corner. So the K2 had the same sort of discoloration. It was a little bit worse than the K2. But uh, it just means that the filament needs to be purged a little bit more. And that's, I guess, what happens when you're changing from black to white. You can see it. So maybe just increase the purge amount. Um, but overall, this was um, PETG mixed with PLA. So on this one, I did a, just a bit of a multi-material test. And the blues PLA, and that sort of sat well with the PETG. So overall, that came out pretty good. Just need to address that. A couple other things. Um, printed some trays here. These all came out nice, apart from like the stringing of the filament. Um, which was present on the beardy as well, but I can sort that out in the settings. But overall, um, the trays came out, they're all dimensionally accurate. Uh, these printed on the bed, like this. So it's pretty much the whole bed. Um, and the first, the first layer came out good. It's uniform across the whole lot. I don't see any much difference not really visible across the whole lot so the uh, auto bed leveling seems to be working okay at least on these anyway um, so yeah I can't really fault that they came out nice and then we'll get on to the other models um, the typical arm that I print this is really good just to test uh, warping because these things warp all the time because I print them like that um, so the bed held, I didn't need glue or anything with this one, um, so yeah, that came out okay, not much issue with that, looks good, no real strange artifacts on it, so the printer's performing rather well. And then the last one is just this bar holder, um, this one came out okay, there was a little bit of weird um, artifacts or just some weirdness on the corner here. Not quite sure what would cause that, but it's not smooth. Like a lot of the other printers, it's nice and smooth, but this one's just got something strange happening. So I'm going to have to work out what the go is with that in the settings, but overall it printed okay. For something like this, that's the back of it anyway, so really um, if I was to sell this to a customer, they wouldn't even notice it because of the stick on the wall like that. So. And now we'll just check it for dimensional accuracy. Uh, it was printed on the bed like that, in front of the printer here. So it's printed across the bed. So we'll just grab these. And it's this is a 25mm model. So try and get that on the camera. It's 2504. And 25, oh, 2503, roughly. So it's dimensionally accurate where the K3 that I was having in my last video it was, wasn't printing it right and I needed to level the gantry in that to kind of sort that out. So out of the box, printed fairly well, dimensionally accurate, within point, you know, two or three of a millimetre, so I'm happy enough with that. And yeah, all up, it seems to have printed okay. I can't really fault it too much. Apart from the stringing and the weird, you know, artifact on the corner here, um, I don't know if that's extrusion issues or whatever, but I'll sort that out later. But overall, it performed well. Um, you can install ring curls on it, so you can do mainsail, stuff like that with it, exactly the same as the Cobra 3. Um, the RFID app that I made works with it, so you can tag your own filament spools, stuff like that. If I was to choose between the Cobra 3 or the S1, I would probably just go the S1 because it's got the camera, it's got the extra stuff, it's uh, enclosed, so you get less chances at warping. Um, it's linear rails, proper linear rails, not that weird bearing stuff that the Cobra 3 has. And yeah, 
you so yeah if you're deciding between those two printers definitely go the s1 i can't see any reason not to for an extra couple of hundred bucks it's a better printer so yeah i hope that helps you if you're looking at these printers anyway and then i can finally get this off my table and move on to the next project